There you go. Thank you. Thank okay, you. Okay, everyone say hello to Kathy Kim. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Mm -hmm. Hi, everyone. Um, I am sorry about that. Kathy Kim, Director of Business Development for Chefs for Seniors of Central New Jersey. We are a personal chef service that focuses on providing healthy, new, the healthy, fresh, and delicious meals for seniors in our homes. Um, we don't just deliver the meal, we deliver the chef. We will send out a chef weekly or bi-weekly to prepare for you 10 to 12 meals um, that you can use um, throughout the week for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Um, today we have with us our executive chef, James, who started as one of our, I won't want to call him a line cook, but our personal chefs in the field um, and is continuing to help to grow our, our services throughout uh, Middlesex, Mercer, Somerset, now Monmouth and Ocean counties. So um, we're excited to be here and to share a modification of one of our menu items, which is um, we have a butternut squash mac and cheese. So um, Chef James is changing it up to be a pumpkin mac and cheese. Um, you won't find the cocktail on our menu. Um, really? I'm not quite sure if you tip <laughs> the chef well enough, they might make you one. Um, but, uh, and you're more than happy to have one while the chef is in your home and cooking for you. So, um, but thank you for having us today. We're excited to be here partnering with Scan on this and, um, I'll turn it over to James or Andrea to turn it over to James. Okay, so I'm I, I'm going to uh, take off your spotlight, Kathy, and um, spotlight. There's James. Okay, so can I just met bef James before you get started, just to keep things kind of somewhat orderly? If anyone has any questions at all, please just put it right in the chat. And we'll, Mary Beth and I will monitor that and we'll make sure that we get your questions answered, okay? All right, mm -hmm. let's go, Chef James. How you doing, everybody? Hey. I'm just, I'm going to adjust the camera. Is that a good look right there? You can come down a little bit lower. Okay, so we can see what's happening. All right. All right, I'll make sure I introduce everything right here. Good. All right. Well, uh, as Kathy stated, we're uh, doing a little take on one of our menu items. That's a butternut squash mac and cheese. We're, we're substituting pumpkin puree as uh, we want to do some pumpkin-themed uh, uh, recipes today. First thing we have to do is we need a fine dice of about a half a cup of onion. Andrea, I lost, there's no picture here. I lost the whole picture. Uh, you lost your picture? This is a leader in 2020, 2020 Gardner Magic Quadrant for Meeting Solutions. That's, I, I don't understand what's going on here. We can still see everything just fine on our end though. Looks good. I will say that Zoom might be um, in the process of asking for some updates. So I'm not sure if your Zoom needs to be updated. If that's causing an issue, Maddie. I don't know. It's weird, but I've got nothing here. It just says read the report. You know what, Maddie? You can if you have to. Uh, if this happens to anybody, you can always uh, exit and rejoin. We'll let you right in. Sometimes that takes care of it. I, I it's just joining. Um, All right, but let's we'll let uh, the chef continue. All right, sorry about that. All right. Are we all good to go? Yes. All right. I have my little burning here, but on my kitchen stove, I have a pot of water boiling right now. So we're going to throw a pound of Celentani, Celentani pasta. It's sort of the Italian version of elbows. It's like a corkscrew. Mm. It's like two elbows together. I like to use these in mac and cheese and also in, in like a summer macaroni salad.
I'm just going to have the pasta start boiling now as we uh, start the rest of the recipe. I have a pan getting warm. A couple of tablespoons of butter in the pan. Mm -hmm. Half a cup of finely diced onions. We just want to make the onions translucent. We don't want to brown them. Can everybody see the pan? Yeah. Yes. Okay. We're just going to make a simple roux here, and that'll thicken up our sauce for our cheese sauce. Simple roux is just equal parts flour and fat. We're using butter, so there's two tablespoons of butter in there. We're going to put two tablespoons of flour. So, Chef James, the butter was put down, and that's what you're sauteing the onion in? Yes. Okay. Hey, James, if you can, bring the hot plate, if, if it allows to, a little closer. Yeah, to I, I'm not going to need a cotton board. I can slide it over. No, you're good. It's looking great, actually. How's that? Mm, better? Very good. All right. So, right now, that flour, you want to cook the flour off. You don't want that flour taste. Now you start to see the flour, the butter, and the onions clump up. At this point, we're going to introduce the milk. We have two cups of milk coming in. We want to whip that in slowly. And that'll start thickening, thickening up immediately. This is a real simple recipe. Do you have that on boil or are you just above a simmer? Just right, I had it on medium to high. Now I'm, I dropped it to medium to low right now. Okay. Just to incorporate this milk. Good question. Hmm. Yeah, if you had that on high, when you put the milk in, it'll boil over on you. Now we just want to bring that up to a simmer and that'll happen pretty quickly. I have it on about medium right now. So is there any issue if somebody didn't want to use full fat milk? Do you have a recommendation? Could you do skim milk? Could you do Listen, 2%? When, when, the, yeah, when, when I make this, when I make this for some of our seniors, I use skim milk, non-fat milk, 1% milk, whatever okay. they prefer, even almond milk. Okay. My oh, daughter, all right. My daughter's a big almond milk drinker. And if I make it for her, I'll use the almond milk, unsweetened, of course. All right. Good to know. I've made it with oat milk, too. We have one client that loves oat milk. All right. That's coming to a nice simmer now. Now we have four ounces and seven ounces of Gruyere and cheddar. That'll melt rather quickly here. Getting hungry. That already looks <laughs> delicious, right? Yeah. It is delicious. I made and now the this secret morning. ingredient of the day, <laughs> the secret ingredient of the day, a little cup of- Oh, everyone needs, oh. One. Everyone oh. needs one of those. <laughs> I like it. You like that one, and it, and it has every measurement on it. Yes, that's yeah. cool. They, they even have a, a small one for teaspoons and tablespoons. And my next gift to myself. Yeah, I need one of those. No, it's Look. good, especially for something like that for the pumpkin to scoop that out and measure it, and then put it in the pot. Look at that; it looks beautiful. Mm. It does. The now, we'll, to give it a little touch of that full pumpkin, just a little pinch of cinnamon and nutmeg. Not much. You don't want to overdo it. But we have a cheese sauce. That looks great. How quick was that? That was very quick because that's mm -hmm. in real time. Yeah. That's in real time right there. We're waiting on a pasta now. 
I know the recipe says for a uh, uh, calls for I think a uh, uh, ten by thirteen. You know what my favorite ten by thirteen is? Right here. Easy Fifth clean. Tray aluminum. Yeah. Especially this. You don't want to be washing this later. Right in the recycle bin. Spray that up good. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to remove this pot from the burner because we want to kick it up a little. We're going to make a little toasted panko and Parmesan cheese. Oh, that's to throw over the top. Use try to use a non-stick pan for this. A tablespoon or two of olive oil. The recipe calls for a half a cup. You could go a little more than a half a cup. I like your measuring style. Mm -hmm. My grandmother's arthritis hands. This much. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I learned. A couple, of tea, a couple of tablespoons of Parmesan cheese in there. And this you want to make sure you keep moving. You don't want to burn it. So you're just, you're just toasting the breadcrumbs? Yes, with the Parmesan and a little olive oil. Well, that looks like that would be delicious over many other things as well. Yeah. That's good on a flip-flop. I bet, yeah. I'll let you know later. Actually, actually, the same using the same method, add a little garlic. If you add a little garlic to this and make it a little wetter, you don't want it as dry. You want it more like a, a kid was making a sandcastle, like that texture. Add a little garlic, and then you have an oregano of breadcrumb for baked clams, stuffed mushrooms. Anything. Roasted broccoli. That's good. Let me check on the pasta. Pasta's looking good. Now, usually I would, I would, usually I would cook the pasta about eight minutes, but because we're going to bake it, I'm going with five minutes on the pasta. Keep it a little al dente. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to strain the pasta in the sink, and I'll be right back to you. We'll be right here. Unfortunately, on our budget, I don't get a cameraman. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, Chef, J Chef James, do you have any clients that are gluten-free? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Do you yeah. have a gluten-free pasta that you happen to like out of curiosity? Um, there's a couple of different ones. I, ju I just made some gluten-free gluten -free lasagna last week for Arthur. Um, most of the stores carry several brands. It's just uh, when you're cooking it, pay close attention. Don't some of them, if you overcook them, become mush. Right. Especially, the, especially the stuff made out of chickpeas. I find the stuff made out of rice comes a little better. Okay. The, the chickpea stuff, if, if you overcook it, it gets really, really mushy. Uh, chef, we have a question. Could you add right. hamburger meat and tomatoes, I guess, to the... Um, this, this is from Joan. I guess she's asking, you know, to the whole... Well, you could add hamburger meat and tomatoes to anything, really, with pasta. Absolutely. But, Joan, Absolutely. are you asking if you can add that to the cheese sauce? Oh, yeah. That sounds pretty darn good to me. Yeah. Sounds like a pretty good add-on, yeah. Yeah, it does. Hey, there's an Italian dish, they add tuna to it. Oh, yeah. Right into the, right into the uh, hot sauce, right? Right, yeah. The pasta right into the hot sauce. Oh, this smells delicious. Now, I noticed you, now only one cup of pumpkin really uh, made a big difference, I guess. Absolutely. I could smell it. And, and very light on that cinnamon and nutmeg. You saw I just put a little pinch, and I could smell it from here. That's just a little pinch. 
Like an eighth of a teaspoon? Is that Even a pinch? Probably, yeah, an eighth of a te teaspoon, a light eighth of a teaspoon. Okay, a light. Good to know. Did you see what I did? I took a pinch right yeah, there. Literally. That's, That's enough. Okay. We have our grease pan. Wow, look at that. Looks awesome right now. Come together. Mm. It's really unfortunate we can't we can't all have a little taste, right? Don't worry, we're working on that with Amazon with drones. We're gonna just fly it out. <laughs> oh, thank you, Seth. Yes. We're working on it, trust me. Mm. That just looks so good. Now a panko right over the top. Would you Once ever, instead instead of panko, would you ever just use, you know, seasoned breadcrumbs? No, would you I wouldn't use seasoned breadcrumbs. Seasoned breadcrumbs, the, 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 the seasoning, you, 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 you're going to lose a lot of uh, the taste of, you know, what, whatever flavors, cheeses and stuff. Seasoned breadcrumbs don't work well with this. Now, I'm keeping this healthy right now. For those of you who want to indulge a bit, before you put this in the oven, you can put a couple of tabs of butter on the top, but we're not going to do that. There you go, right in the oven, and that's done. And that's cooking for how long? Chef? How long in it? How high? Yeah, I, I would say 20 minutes should be fine. I mean, everything in there is pretty much cooked already, so it's really just a matter yeah. of it coming together, right, James? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And you want you 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 want to cook that pumpkin through a little bit. Yep. And the pasta needs to cook off a little bit for a couple more minutes. And, and the pasta, yeah. right? We only cooked the pasta five minutes, but that pasta will cook in that sauce right now. All so, right. a qu question: If so, you you were using cheddar and Gruyere. And yes. so what might be some other uh, equally delicious uh, cheeses in case somebody doesn't have that in the house or doesn't like them? Oh, you could you could use uh, any type of cheeses you have on hand or any type of cheese you like. Gruyere, Gruyere has a nice, nutty flavor and it melts well. And of course, the cheddar, the sharp cheddar is just classic with mac, mac and cheese. Oh, yeah. White and yellow, yeah. Okay. We have any other questions on the mac and cheese? Yeah, when is that? Show. When is that drone coming? I'm working on it. I, listen, Bezos is busy with some starships right now. I'm working on it. <laughs> and and you want to introduce Seth? I don't know. I hear his voice. I don't know if you. Yes. Want to okay. <laughs> Let Let's. Um. Seth is out there, and where are you, Seth? Let's find you. Uh, can I spotlight? Seth? Yes. Go ahead. Spotlight right. him as There's well. Seth. This is, okay, well, Seth, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Sure. Yeah. Hey, guys. Uh, I'm Seth Lefberg, owner of Chefs for Seniors here. Um, I love this business. I and mean, we started a couple of years ago um, and we are just serving the community and loving every second of it. Um, Kathy told you a little bit about it. We are a weekly customizable meal prep service. So we come every week or every two weeks and our chef does all the grocery shopping. We show up with all the pots and pans and knives and all we need from our clients is just an oven. And we prepare meals just like Chef James is doing. And our clients get to sit at the counter and enjoy it with us and, and watch us. And it's, it's just a loving, I love this uh, experience. And so it's really nice to be here with everybody um, and to do this for you. And let me just say that if you want to know a little more about Seth and Chefs for Seniors, a few weeks ago, Mary Beth and I interviewed him on Scan FYI, shameless plug. So go on our YouTube channel and you'll get to know a lot more about Seth and Chefs for Seniors. Thank you, Seth. So, Chef James, if you did, can you use pretty much any uh, any pasta? Is there any secret about yeah. that? Yeah, you you can use any pasta. Like I said, I like to use they're called uh, um, celentanis. It's like a like, corkscrew. Like, so, yeah, it's like a corkscrew. It looks like two or three elbows together. I just find that it holds the sauce better than just the small elbows. And like I said, I use that even, I even use that like when I make uh, a cold, a cold macaroni salad in the summer. 
in the backyard. I just find it holds the so the sauce or in in the in the case of a cold pasta salad, you know, the mayo dressing, it holds it better. All right. Now, of course, most most of us are going to buy our pumpkin in in the supermarket. We're going to buy the canned pumpkin, uh, you know. But if you wanted to roast your own pumpkin, what kind Absolutely. of pumpkin? What would you suggest? What do you buy? An orange one. Yeah, <laughs> but beyond that. I mean, you're not going to buy. Is there is there a particular kind of pumpkin that's especially suitable? Not not that I'm aware of. So I, mean, I never roasted a pumpkin. Better. I, I really, I, I I'm not a big uh, pumpkin aficionado. But the, it's, I think it's I think you know basically a 10 inch pumpkin is probably the best one to to be able to fit in your oven and probably have enough guts inside for you to be able to make either a pumpkin pie or something. Nope. All right. Sounds. But originally this recipe, you're using butternut squash. Yes. Which also, by the way, doesn't that sound equally fantastic? Yes. It does. Yeah. No, it's delicious. And, and, and with that recipe, what we do is just uh, about one inch cubes and roast it and then incorporate it. We don't use it as a puree. We use it cubed. So it gives it a lot more texture to the oh. mac and cheese. Oh, so it's not totally mush. You get a little. Right. It's not pureed. I like that. Yeah. Now there's a question here. I think we kind of answered it, but we'll ask it again. Um, how long in the oven at what temperature? I'm going to say 20 minutes. I have it at 350. About 20 minutes should do it. And at 20 minutes, if the top isn't, the, if the uh, panko isn't toasted to your desired uh, like, you could simply just throw it under the broiler for a couple of seconds. And you do need seconds. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Keep an eye. Yeah. yeah that'll, that'll crisp it up nice. Okay. All right. Remember, anyone has with a question, just go ahead and put it right into the chat and we'll make sure that we ask. What are some other things that you like to do with pumpkin besides the mac and cheese? Pumpkin? I like to make uh, pumpkin spice uh, Russians. Well, yeah. <laughs> Okay, perfect segue. Uh, my man's good. Was, <laughs> a Andrea, it's Kathy. I was going to add in there too. Um, one thing they want to make sure that if they don't get pumpkin pie filling yes. when they do this, that you're just getting pureed pumpkin. Right. That's right. Um, exactly. That's right. Because the pumpkin pie filling has is pre-seasoned. So you want to watch that part of it. And sometimes there's sugars involved and stuff like that. Um it gets a little bit tougher after the holiday season to find regular canned pumpkin. Um, it's not always readily available. So I would say stock up. Um, mm -hmm. We've recently started seeing a lot more of the health benefits of pumpkin in its, in its entirety. And it can be used in anything from like, it can be used in soups. It can be used in chilies. Um, it, it's, you know, it's pumpkin spice stuff is always got that flair, you know, because of like Duncan and all of those guys. Um, but oddly enough, that's more of the seasoning than it is the actual pumpkin itself. Um, but you can get true vitamin A and it's a great source of fiber and there's even protein in, in pumpkin. Um, oddly enough, when my mother-in-law traveled to cap to, um, Africa, they ate, a they added pumpkin cubed, like we do the butternut squash to a lot of their dishes. Um, you can even add it to different salads and stuff like that. So it does have a lot of health benefits to it besides the Gruyere cheese in the butter. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not go there, Kathy. It was, yeah. it was only two tablespoons of butter on a pound. Yeah, of yeah, yeah. I mean, this is not something we're eating every night. Maybe once a week, though, in the fall. <laughs> okay, so uh, looking forward to seeing you whip out that white Russian. Hmm. We're gonna start with a cocktail shaker full of ice, all right? What I did prior was a couple of graham crackers in my little food processor. Do we need to tilt the camera back? Yeah, now? I was just gonna oh, say that. Right, so we can, yeah, right. yeah. Ah, look at, yeah. oh, that's yes. perfect. All right, so I had some I have a mini food processor. I just do a couple of graham crackers, some pumpkin spice, 
and a little sugar. Just gonna mix that up a little bit. Have a bowl with some water. Just wanna wet the rim of the glass. Yeah, sometimes you have to help it a little. <laughs> I'm helping. <laughs> Do you make your own pumpkin spice or is that a um, pre-mixed? That's a pre-mix. Okay. Now, nice premium vodka, three ounces. It's all equal parts. This is a two ounce shot glass. Name on the Kahlua. So you have to surrender your keys after drinking this one. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I won't be driving anywhere after this. This is actually, this, this will make two cocktails. And of course, instead of cream, today we're going to use pumpkin spice creamer. Which is pretty available right now this time mm -hmm. of year. Mm -hmm. So instead of having cake for dessert, you just have this. There's dessert right here. Right. Nice shake. Well, it's beautiful looking too. Look at that. Probably smells delicious. I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't be driving nowhere if you drink a couple of those. That looks delicious. Now, a question for you. So <laughs> if you don't have if you don't have Kahlua, you could use any other uh, coffee flavored liqueur. Uh, it's not a true Russian then. Well, I know, I know, but we have yes, to, sometimes I, I, we I'm have sure, to. I'm sure you could. Oh, wow. A little whipped cream. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so full disclosure, if anyone watches Scan FYI, I'm not sure if that whole cocktail thing came out before or after we recorded, but this was kind of like Andre and I and Seth going, it's going to be on a Friday, so why don't we incorporate cocktails? <laughs> mm -hmm. Our cooking demo is on a Friday. Well, we had we, we, we did a guacamole uh, Zoom, and everybody had margaritas prior to making the guac. And uh, <laughs> there, there was exploding tomatoes all over the Zoom. <laughs> All right. Any questions? So Anybody another, work? if you can't find the, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, creamer, the creamer. pumpkin creamer, what about the idea of just taking maybe some half and half, adding a little pinch of spice? Right. This is what I'm going to be. And using my stick blender to whip it up. Cause there you go. That sounds good to me. Yeah. That sounds, that's, that's my alternative to that. So how yeah. much, so you had three ounces of, of the uh, creamer? Yes, it was all equal parts. Okay, all equal parts. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because I'm going to, that's what I'm going to do. I'm, and I'm just going to use my stick blender to, you know, kind of froth it up with my pumpkin spice. That should That'll work. work. Yeah. That'll work. And since I don't have Kahlua and I know I, I'm going to use, um, I forgot what it's called, but it's just a, like a pumpkin, I mean, pumpkin. It's, it's like liqueur. a coffee liqueur. I, think, yeah. I feel like it'll give the same effect. Yeah. What is it like Tia Maria or something? Yeah. Maybe yeah. It I can't remember. It's in the kitchen, but um, it's waiting. So have you ever made a cocktail that actually had pumpkin in it? Nope. Yeah. I can't imagine that. Anybody ever done that? 
This sounds unless pretty. You do, unless you do like a smoothie style. Oh, like the, oh, you know, those, those, um, the boozy, the boozy milkshakes are a little bit more in vogue these days. So if you did a boozy milkshake, you could probably use a little bit of pureed pumpkin in it, but you'd, you'd be throwing in like the ice cream and stuff like that. And I would say it would probably be something similar, like to the Kahlua versus like a, well, I guess you could go full, bl- full blown vodka, <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but then you're, then you're battling sugar shock with the, uh, with the uh, alcohol, so. Well, I think this, even without the whipped cream, would still be absolutely delicious, but it looks pretty darn good with the whipped cream. How is it? Pretty good? Chef James, yum? Yes, (laughs) absolutely. It tastes really good. Sorry, you guys can't taste it. I know. But But it is strong. What is That's the pr- what is the predominant flavor that you're getting? You're getting a hint of the pumpkin from the creamer, and you get a blast of vodka in the back of your throat. That's my dollar place right there. So, in other words, you, what could be bad? Oh. James, can sweet. you hold it up one more time? Sure. Oh yeah, it's nice. Beautiful. I like the touch of the graham crackers. I think that's a nice little touch visually. Very appealing. I I, I figured the graham crackers on top right in the pumpkin spice. There's enough pumpkin taste, especially with the rim. So I have a question, Kathy or James or Seth. What might be some of the dishes that you find you're you're cooking for your seniors that are on your, um, your plans? What are some of the things you cook for them? Well, the most uh, common kind of, yeah. I, I could speak to that if you like. Sure. James, I was going to let you say, I know we've been working on actually creating um, what we, what we want to call our, our proven winners. Um, there are definitely some that are ve- definitely more popular than others. Um, but I'll let James kind of, he, he, he deals with all the, all of our chefs in the field and knows what, what the orders are going like. So I, I, to, to tell you the truth at this time of the year, we see a big influx of uh, soups. We do a lot of soups. Um, our, tu- our white Tuscan bean soup, which is really basically pasta basil. Um, our garden vegetable soup, which is really minestrone. But uh, we do a lot. Of one, of, one, of, one of the most popular dishes is our pistachio crusted salmon. Oh, yum. We uh, take salmon fillets, paint them with a little Dijon mustard, and then buzz up some panko and pistachios and just coat the top of it. A little olive oil in the oven, 10 minutes, done. And uh, any any uh, client that has tried it, reorders it. That, that's very, very popular. And uh, a lot of chicken dishes. We do... Uh, uh, what we what um, what's called in our menu a uh, chicken roll up. It's basically a breaded chicken breast with some goat cheese and pesto, and rolled up like a, an eggplant rollatini, and then just baked fifteen minutes in the oven. Then when you slice it and present it in the in the oh. tray, it really looks appetizing and it tastes delicious. Sounds great. That's really, that's popular. And, and also that, that uh, uh, one thing that I found popular with several of my clients is another dish we do called tamale pie. It's, it's just uh, ground chicken sauteed with, with some diced, finely diced onions and, and peppers with a little cumin and smoked paprika. So you get that, that taco flavor. And then we put it in a, a foil pan, cover that with cornbread, mixed with a little oh. cheese and cornbread, and then wow. topped with cheese. It's like a little Tex-Mex uh, flavor to it. And that, that's that been very popular. That and sounds fabulous. No, and it's quick and easy. Our, 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 our whole our menus uh, and our recipes are created so we can get in and out of a service within two and two and a half hours. So... They're healthy, they're quick for us to make, and they're delicious. 
Mm. It's not quick and, you know, and we're using all fresh ingredients. We don't come in there with canned and jarred and prepared stuff. We come in there with bell peppers, you know, ground chicken, fresh tomatoes, if the recipe calls for it. We're not using canned tomatoes. And Andrea, everything on our, our menu is, we have icons on them all that identifies um, different dietary requests or restrictions such as gluten-free. I think, uh, Mary Beth, I think you asked about earlier, um, dairy-free, low sodium, diabetic friendly. Yeah. Um, our corporate headquarters worked with the dietitian to create a lot of those menus that way. And then we can alter some as well, because if you've got something that's got a side of pasta and you don't want, you know, all that extra, you know, you can't do the gluten or whatever. We can do a side of, we can change it to a side of rice or we can, right. you know, do the, the gluten-free noodles. Right. Um, and that's the benefit of working with a personal chef is to get those, not only the flavor profiles that you like, but also the dietary restrictions that you need to keep healthy. So exactly. um, it's very important that way. I, I have, I have several clients that like chicken cutlets. I bake the chicken cutlets. I don't fry them. Bat them, you know, egg them, fl uh, uh, breadcrumb, put them in the oven and bake them. They come out just as good. Yeah. yeah. I have no, I have no doubt. Yeah. So Chef James, let me ask you a question. So how did you acquire your uh, cooking skills and your love of cooking? My grandmother and my mother. How do you like that? Not surprised. Okay. And, uh, but, uh, no, my family, my, my, my uncle and my cousin, uh, as you can tell from my Southern accent, I'm from Brooklyn. <laughs> southern Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah, South Brooklyn. But uh, my uncle and my and my cousins had uh, Italian salamorias, you know, pork stores. I don't know if you're familiar with them. It's like an Italian deli, but has a butcher in there. So uh, at six, seven years old, I knew how to make fresh mozzarella, stuffed sausages. Wow. That's basically, you know, how I learn the business and then uh throughout the years just honed my skills through uh several different jobs i did a lot of uh, uh catering you know weddings and stuff like that at a local country club down here in monmouth county and i worked at several restaurants along the way you know high-end uh restaurants and then by the luck of the draw i ran into seth there you go. Well, you have a couple of questions here. Someone is at, we, you know, uh, we were talking about salmon, I guess. Somebody's yes. asking, uh, what temperature would you cook salmon at? Salmon, I usually cook at about 375. But depending on, uh, depending on how done you like it, no more than 10 minutes for a salmon filet. No, you know. Typical eight eight ounce salmon fillet, ten minutes. Okay. Right on a sheet pan, just spray it with a little uh, pan. And mustard goes great with salmon, and you can use mustard as, so to speak, a glue, and put any kind of coating on top. You can flavor up some panko. Like I said before, we do the panko with the pistachios. If somebody's allergic to nuts or doesn't like nuts, you could just flavor up some panko. With a little garlic, oregano, basil, and then just put a little mustard on the salmon, dip it in that breading, put it in the oven, roast it. Ten minutes, you got a wonderful meal. I was thinking that the panko you made for the pumpkin would actually be delicious on chicken or fish. Absolutely, and like I said, that that was just basic a little uh, a little parmesan and panko, but you could flavor that. You could take that anywhere. That is my basic uh, um, oregano except it's a little wetter when you make it oregano. And of course, there's going to be oregano, and basil, and garlic in there. And for that, actually, you asked me before about flavored breadcrumbs. If you're going to make the oregano, you could use a flavored uh, panko. It sounds like you prefer the panko because yeah. it's, it's a bigger... Um... Even, even when I use, even like a chicken cutlets, I'll use uh, seasoned breadcrumbs. I go half and half with, with panko right. and I use whole wheat panko. I use whole wheat panko. It just gives a, it, it gives a lighter crunch on the coating. I love it. 
You know what, Chef James, just in case someone listening, someone joining us here doesn't understand the difference or know the difference between panko and regular breadcrumbs, can you just explain? Because they are very different. Yeah, they're very well. Obviously, breadcrumbs, breadcrumbs are just ground up bread. And most of the times we're buying them seasoned. Panko are Japanese breadcrumbs. It's a lighter, it's a lighter and, and fluffier uh, breading. But also just, gr but ground up, but it has a lot more texture to it. It's not, yeah. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. It, it, they're just like puffy. I, I equate them to, you know, like a puffy uh, Rice Krispies. They're yeah. just, they're, they're, just pu they're puffier in area. There's, they're not as dense as your typical, you know, uh, Four Seasons uh, tiny breadcrumbs. And I think they actually stick better too, right? To um, like cutlets when you use the panko versus the breadcrumbs. Sometimes the well, breadcrumbs seem to want to fall it, off. It's, it's, it, regular, regular breadcrumbs will stick. It's just the process you use makes you have to, when, when breadcrumb isn't sticking, that means the egg isn't sticking to the protein. That's why you flour the protein. The flour makes the egg stick. Uh, After the egg, then the breadcrumb will stick. A lot of times people just go into the egg and the breadcrumb and then the breadcrumb is going to fall off because the egg is actually falling off. Not oh, the breadcrumb. Yeah. Makes sense. The not here into the protein. Makes sense. Yeah. So with Thanksgiving coming up soon, actually, will you be cooking for a lot of folks in their homes? Do they, do they want a traditional Thanksgiving dinner as well? You know, your, the client, your clients. You asking me, Kathy, or Seth? Anybody who wants to answer. <laughs> we, 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 we do offer we do offer our clients uh, a Thanksgiving menu where just as you know, if we're in the house, just as we prepare the other meals, we'll we'll make some turkey breast with a cranberry relish, you know, and some of the sides if they like. We'll customize something for them at their request. Okay, so especially if they're one of our clients that's by themselves, Andrea, one right. of the key one of the key focuses of Chefs for Seniors, besides the nutrition aspect of it, is also to have that friendly face that comes into the home um, every week or every other week that's there for two hours that can have a conversation with you. Um, you know, for, frequently seniors are, are resistant to like, you know. I, I don't need that kind of help. I don't have that, you know, what kind of help do I need? Like, and a, a lot of times a chef is not perceived the same way as, you know, maybe a home health aid or companion service. Mm -hmm. um, so the chef can come in, you know, and we, we are frequently hired by, you know, their loved ones, their children who maybe are not local. Um, so it does kind of lead to that. And one of the things we do plan on doing is reaching out to our clients um, to see who is going to be by themselves during that holiday time and making sure that they've got, you know, a holiday style meal for, um, to celebrate with. So everybody deserves something special during the holidays. Very nice. So when you're cooking for someone, and let's just say, for example, you're cooking, let's say five dinners, seven dinners, the week's worth. And so is it all portioned and packaged and ready for ever, ready for that person to just heat up and eat? Yes, it is. Um, the the selections that the, the our clients will make four selections. Those four selections will turn into turn into ten or twelve uh, full dinners, as Kathy stated. And we have twenty eight ounce rectangle containers in which we put the salmon with the string beans and the mashed sweet sweet potatoes. Cover it, label it, date it, and also tell them. What is what 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 items can be frozen? What items shouldn't be frozen? Should just be refrigerated. That's why uh, on a salmon dish, typically, we'll leave two salmon dishes because to freeze salmon and reheat it, it usually doesn't taste as good. And the dishes that can be frozen, typically, we'll make four portions of those dishes. Okay. So there is there is a little there is a little science to. Uh, what were the portions we provide and how we provide them and how they store them. Well, I like too that you're giving everyone instructions so they know exactly what to do. <clears throat> Look what I found. 
There she is. Oh, look at that. Look at that. It is beautiful to look at. Nice color from that little bit of pumpkin and all that beautiful cheese. Breadcrumbs nicely toasted. Oh, yeah. Oh, now he's torturing us. <laughs> that was nice and hot. Mmm. Mm. <laughs> I, I actually make my mac and cheese with that kind of pasta as well. It, it does. It's a nice texture. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's really good. That looks delicious. like a great Thanksgiving side dish. Mm -hmm. That is delicious. I wish we could email everyone a sample, but we can't. We can. What's your emails? I'll stop sending them out now. <laughs> <laughs> that really looks beautiful. Somebody's got to be happy tonight. And, it, and it's not me. I'm heading to Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania to a football game. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> James, feel free to drive it by my house. You're not too far. <laughs> and, uh, I'm sure Elizabeth and Michael will take care of that. <laughs> that as I was gonna say, that'll hold for Sunday when you're watching football. Oh, yeah. If it lasts, well, the only reason why I have a shot that it lasts that long is because the guy that would devour it is away at college playing football. Oh, this wouldn't have uh, a chance if my son was home. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a question for you, uh, chef. So if you're adding garlic to the breadcrumbs, so how do you, would you slice it, uh, shred it, crush it? What's the best way I, to add the garlic? I, I would either add finely diced or granulated garlic. Okay. It's okay to add granulated garlic to that, to the breadcrumb to make the oregano. That's fine. Not garlic powder, granulated garlic. Okay. That's like dehydrated, you know? Yeah. All right, good. Thank you for that. Um, and here's somebody I thought, I thought somebody put a question up about Red Hook up there. Oh, I just saw that. Oh, Red Hook, right. Southern Brooklyn. Well, we said you were from the South, the South of Brooklyn. Is Red Hook in the South? Yeah, Red Hook. There you go. Brooklyn. All right. Maybe we have another Brooklynite out here. I got Brooklyn. A Southerner. <laughs> another Southerner out there. And here's another. I like using pasta, pasta shells, shell. little cups of cheese. Yeah. Nice. Pasta so, shells work. Yes. I mean, I think always it's important to remember, you know, a, a recipe is a guideline. There's lots right. of things you can do, lots of different choices on the pasta. You can just take the original recipe, the proportions, and you can use it in many different ways. Absolutely. But looks looks pretty, pretty delicious. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm looking I'm forward saying, to my right Russian later, I'm speaking still. for myself. <laughs> and leftover cheese, the same thing. My husband made mac and cheese one Sunday, and I said, but we didn't have the white cheddar, and we usually make the gruyere as well. He's like, no, I used um, the pepper jack. And it turned Fine. out really good. I thought it was going to be super spicy, mm -hmm. but it was offset by the gruyere. It was good. So use what you got. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I have I have one client who loves mozzarella, so I call it Mrs. O's mac and cheese because she doesn't want any cheddar, gruyere, nothing. She wants mozzarella yes. parmesan. That's it. Oh. So it's Mrs. O's mac and cheese. <laughs> Still sounds delicious. Yeah, I, I'll tell you one thing: when we assign a client to a chef, that chef stays with that client. And some of the clients I've been servicing, I've been servicing for a better part of a year. And you almost become like family. They look forward to you showing up at Thursday at one o'clock. They're waiting for you. They call you the night before. Hey, you're going to be here tomorrow. Yes, I am, Mrs. O. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, well, I've been changing light bulbs and getting mail. and <laughs> I fixed the garage door. Well, what's not to love about someone coming to your house with groceries, cooking up a storm, and when they leave, you've got, you've got a, 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 a fantastic array of goodies to be eating through the week. Sounds great. Again, if anybody wants to know a little bit more about Chefs for Seniors, 
you know, go on to scan FYI and you can see where uh, Mary Beth and I got to speak with Seth. But we'll also make sure we'll do um, like a follow up. We'll, I'm, I'm recording this, as you all know, and we'll send out the, the link for the recording in case you want to watch it again or share it. And we'll make sure that we include all the links for uh, chefs for seniors in case you want to. You should be so lucky to have Chef James come to your house. OK, anybody have any final questions? Mm -mm. Goodbye. OK. Well, Chef James, thank you very thank much you so for much. spending some time with us this afternoon. The pleasure was all mine, believe me. Safe travels to PA. Yes. Yeah, yeah we need a win um, tomorrow. Big game, we need a win. Thanks for these great recipes, I really. Mm -hmm. They look delicious. They really do look delicious. And um, hey, if anybody tries them, send me an email so we yeah. can share it and let everybody know. I'm popping mm -hmm. mine in the oven shortly. I made it this morning. I'll pop oh, it in the oven good for minutes. you. Yeah. Good for you, Marilyn. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll, end, I'll end on this, though. My grandmother always told me the best ingredient to cook with is love. Love. Mm -hmm. Aww. That's true. Uh, That's yeah, funny. Andrew, if you get any pictures, we'd love to share them on our, uh, okay. on our social media. So, yes, so, uh, and that would very be fantastic. Good. So, Maddie, if you send me a picture and anybody who takes it, send me we'll a picture do. and we will share it because I sure that's, will. that's part yeah. of the fun. And knowing Maddie, it's also cooked with love. <laughs> I had a lot of fun doing it. It was an easy recipe to follow. It really was. Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It doesn't have to be complicated to taste delicious. No, just even tasting the cheese sauces, I was melting it down before I stirred it up. It was really delicious. So. Yeah, making a roux is not that mysterious, yeah. right? No, not at no. all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining thank us you. again. We'll send out the recipe again in case anyone mm -hmm. didn't see it. And um, have a Kathy weekend. and Seth yeah. and Chef James. Thank you, thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Okay. Very enjoyable. Thanks all for joining us. Bye. Have a great weekend. Thank, thank you. you. Happy week. Happy Friday.